Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, this week we're talking about the things I wish I knew when I turned 50 10 years ago. Let's go. Welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor, and I am so glad to be here with you again. I have to say, things are finally settling down a bit after my six or seven week whirlwind of hosting the Connection Retreat, getting COVID, recovering from COVID, dealing with the furnace and the carbon monoxide poisoning and all of the hoo-ha that went along with all of these things. There was more, but you know. That's enough whining because I'm feeling really good now and I'm just happy to be back to, uh, you know, I don't know, normal. I, I want to put normal in quotes because it's never really normal. Anyway, now we're back to our regularly scheduled program. Let's think about it like that. But this is life and specifically this is midlife. There is a lot going on sometimes. Uh, but just quick, before we dive in, I want to invite you to have a book club type of experience with this podcast, Women in the Middle. I like to call this a chance to amplify your listening experience with all the good midlife stuff that we're talking about here on the show. This is perfect for you when you're craving connecting with more women in the middle because we meet together on Zoom. So you'll be hanging with me and other listeners of the podcast. Each month, we take a deeper dive into one of the episodes together so we can share and learn to apply the insights together. It is super fun, and the only thing that's missing is you. So just head over to SusieRosenstein.com and click the podcast tab, and you'll see the podcast club listed there with the other two podcasts. I can't wait to see you in my Zoom square. And one more update. If you haven't checked out my new podcast yet, Women in the Middle Entrepreneurs, please do. We are having a lot of fun over there and sharing a ton of good stuff about the reality of running a business when you're a woman over 50. I would greatly appreciate your support, too, if you could share it with friends and colleagues that you know would enjoy it. It's on iTunes and all the podcast places, including Spotify and your favorite podcast apps. It's also on my website at SusieRosenstein.com under the podcast tab. Okay, now let's dive into this week's topic, which is all about the things I wish I knew when I turned 50. Now that I'm 60, I can reflect back and appreciate the kinds of insights that would have really helped when you're moving through your 50s and beyond. Really good stuff. Like these lessons will save you time, frustration, confusion, and probably even some emotional pain. So let's take a look. The first thing I wish I knew is the importance of taking regret proofing seriously. Now, the way I think about regret proofing is thinking about potential regrets in advance. You want to prevent what you didn't do, what you didn't say, what you didn't try, that kind of thing. And a few problems come up, which is why this needs to be highlighted. (laughs) It's common that a few things are going to get in your way. The first thing that you may not even know or be clear about are your priorities. And that makes it difficult to figure out what to do about them. The other big problem is that you're likely very comfortable living in an autopilot way. (laughs) Most of us are not really thinking intentionally about your future the way you could be. And then one more thing, you may also not fully appreciate how important it is for you to check in with your belief and readiness to actually take control over your life. Now, this one might surprise you, but it's pretty common to find yourself waiting for life to happen to you versus creating your life on purpose. This means that you end up wasting a lot of time. And as you know, at our age, time urgency is a thing. You don't want to run out of time. Think of what that really means when you think it, that you don't want to run out of time, dot, 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 before you die to do whatever it is that you don't want to regret, right? You don't want to run out of time to do what you want. Why are you worried? Because you might die. That's what we're talking about. I've talked about this in another podcast because really get clear. That's what we mean, even if we don't say it. So if you need a bit more help getting clear on figuring out what you might regret, 
a great strategy is to check in with your future self. So just imagine her 10 or 20 years from now and see what she has to say about what you think you might regret. She actually knows you better than anyone else, and she has a lot to say. (laughs) She does. So my friend, this is the first thing I wish I knew when I turned 50, and it's the importance of taking regret-proofing seriously. Now, the second thing I wish I knew, number two is related to what I just mentioned about time urgency. I wish I was more aware about my thoughts about aging. It's pretty common to be pretty oblivious about your thoughts about aging. (laughs) You might be aware that maybe you're freaked out, or you might be aware that you're completely cool with aging and really don't think much of it. You also might be aware that you're a little freaked about um, some of your physical changes, like your neck maybe. That one comes up a lot. But, you know, all in all, I think most of us are somewhere in the middle. That is, you probably don't have a clue about how pervasive your negative thoughts are about aging, that they're all rolling around up there, popping in, popping out of your mind. You're just not aware. Now, this might be because you don't yet have your mindfulness skills honed, uh, that you can really rely on them and you can count on them. Like, you know what I mean? Like maybe you don't remember automatically that you have the skill or that your skill just isn't like I said, honed enough, maybe that's it. Or maybe you don't quite appreciate all the ways that aging mindset can sneak in and take hold and start affecting your emotional well-being. For example, what I mentioned earlier about running out of time, this is a really great example. You may sense this thought popping in every once in a while, but it may be a daily thing. And the way it makes you feel can be terrible, anxious, worried, scared, hopeless, just to name a few. Like, what's the point? (laughs) I'm going to run out of time. Or constant stress because you're thinking that you're never doing enough or making changes or plans fast enough. You might notice thoughts about youth, that youth is better. You might be focusing on age itself or the amount of time that you have or don't have to do certain things. You might be limiting your dreams or ideas for what is really possible to create for yourself because these underlying beliefs about age discrimination or about what you should be doing at this age, or what you could be doing at this age, all that stuff. That's why it's so important to be really curious about thoughts like this when you sense them. The biggest surprise I had was how I reacted to a compliment, a common compliment, or at least it used to be, not so much anymore. (laughs) But the compliment was, oh, you don't look your age. I became downright giddy and all puffed up like a peacock. Look at me. I don't look my age. Now, what was that about? That it was better to not look my age? That there was something wrong with looking my age? That youth was way better? That youth was more desirable? And those thoughts were such a big downer. That's the problem. When you think thoughts about your age, they create feelings. And this can get a little out of control when you don't even know what you're thinking. So try to be very aware of what you're actually thinking and feeling about your age and about aging in general. Okay, now the third thing I wish I knew when I turned 50, how important it is to think about what you really want and then allow yourself to want whatever it is and go after it. My friend, wow, this is a big one. Do you really know what's important to you? your priorities, your values? I know it sounds like a ridiculous question, but related to this is how clear are you about what you actually want? Like you can say what you want without a qualifier. Like here's what that is for me. I love the outdoors. I love nature. I love plants and I love birds and animals. I love to bring the outside in and I want a screen porch, period. But here's how I usually think about it. I love bringing the outside in, and I would really love to have a screen porch someday if we could afford it, if it makes sense in the big picture, if it could count as an investment, if I deserve it, blah, blah, blah. Do you see the difference? Now, I'm not saying that I will have a screen porch, or I would just bulldoze the idea through if it didn't make sense. But I'm making the point that there's value in allowing yourself to decide what it is that you actually want, and it doesn't have to make perfect sense or be completely logical. There are benefits to just putting yourself in this mindset. There are spin-off ideas and opportunities that will come up. There are other ways to make related things 
happen. And there's no downside to just knowing what you want. Since I decided this is what I want and all the reasons it makes sense for me, I have a clear, uh, a clear understanding and ability now to just rent an Airbnb that has a porch or, or a hotel room that has nature, or maybe I'll pay for the room that has a better view. I will add extra days to trips to include more nature or something fun that I want to do. Every time I go any place, something like that is included. There are other things that you can do more easily once you know what you want. So even if I'm not bringing the nature into my house, I can absolutely bring the nature into my life more and more, including where I'm living or what I'm renting or what space I'm taking up. You know what I mean? The bottom line is notice when you're not allowing yourself to think about what you want and then try to catch the actual thought and decide if you're okay with that. If not, you know that you can switch things up and think differently if you want to. Okay, number four, the fourth thing I wish I knew when I turned 50, the importance of understanding the difference between what and how in decision-making and going after your dreams. Now, this one is huge, and you may have a little bit of a challenge wrapping your head around it. It comes up all the time with my clients. There's a big difference between what you want to do or plan and how you're going to do it. And if you start to focus on how too soon, it can become a big problem because it will totally squish your dreams. And this is an issue because it can feel indulgent to dream in the first place. So if you finally get yourself to dream and then the way you're going about things is just like against you, it's like stepping on the gas and the brake at the same time. You come up with a dream, you squish it down. You come up with the dream and you let the how squish it down. So the concept I love is to solidify the what by itself. Now, what this means is to just get clear about whatever it is without the rest of the thought but it's too hard or it's too much or it will never happen. Like all that, all the shenanigans. <laughs> There'll be lots of things that you're going to want to add on to that little tiny sentence about what you want. Make the what foundational. Think of it like the cinder blocks holding up a house. You're building the foundation of your intentional life. It's related to the earlier idea about allowing yourself to want whatever big thing it is in your life that is super meaningful to you. It could be a thing, it could be an experience, whatever it is. If it's foundational, it's solid. It's not open to negotiation. The part that is open to negotiation and change is how you're going to make it happen. Asking yourself this question respects your amazing ability as an older and wiser woman with decades of experience figuring stuff out, solving problems, rising to the occasion. That's you. That's when you can get creative. Try ideas on, change your mind, talk to people. Your brain can solve this challenge and it can be fun. The how can be fun. But if you introduce the how into this exercise too soon, you run the risk of squishing out the what. Now, I know that sounds weird, but it's like squelching it, squishing it, pushing it away, minimizing it, all of those things. Now, remember, we want the what to be foundational and strong. So you have to do what you can to support that, to create that. And then you go about the how and you lean in to making it fun, being creative with it, trying things on and figuring out how you're going to make it happen, knowing that it's foundational. It's just a completely different experience for you. And it's one that's, it's really fun. <laughs> It has a high chance of actually helping you. So that's what I have for you today. Four things I wish I knew when I turned 50. Number one, the importance of taking regret proofing seriously. Number two, being more aware of your thoughts about aging. Number three, how important it is to think about what you really want and then allow yourself to want whatever it is and go after it. And number four, the importance of understanding the difference between the what and the how in decision-making related to going after your dreams. Okay, that is it for this episode. As you know, this podcast is all about how to love your life again after 50. It's really all about coaching you to become more intentional and to incorporate mindfulness into your life as a regular practice. This is how you put yourself on your agenda. 
My focus as your midlife coach is to help you get unstuck, clear, and focused on your current values and priorities so that you don't have regrets. I can help you create the success you're looking for. Seriously, if you're ready to change your life and learn the skills to unstick yourself with some masterful coaching, a top-notch curriculum, an infusion of creativity, and a warm, fun, and awesome community of like-minded women, then let's talk about it. I would love to be able to help you get unstuck and be happier and more fulfilled than ever before. Go ahead and book your momentum call at www.womeninthemiddleacademy.com and we will chat. I'm also excited to invite you to amplify your listening experience with the podcast by having more of a book club feel with all of the midlife stuff we're talking about. This is perfect for you when you are craving connection with more women in the middle. Join the Women in the Middle Podcast Club. Just go to SusieRosenstein.com and click the Podcast Club button and away you go. And finally, for show notes and links, head over to www.SusieRosenstein.com and click the Podcast tab and look for Episode 348. You'll see links there for the new show too, Women in the Middle Entrepreneurs, so you can absolutely check that out. Thanks so much for listening. It's time for you to put yourself first, one thought at a time. I'm Susie Rosenstein, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.